Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a very happy and healthy and safe and safu start to your brand new month of April. Of course, it's April 1st, so it's a very annoying day where everyone just jokes about everything. But we have a lot of very important magic and money business to get deep and down and dirty into right here, right now. So let's waste no more time. And now I don't need to remember to talk about the sale any longer because it is a new month with new opportunity. So... Let's get on over uh, on over in here into the magical charts. And as you can see, Bitcoin uh, coming all the way back down to retest that 4030-ish area that we spoke about last night. You know, again, kind of recapping what happened over the weekends. Uh, we got exactly what we were kind of looking for, you know, just grinding this uh, this 4100 level out. Quick retest to, to uh, sorry, to back test this uh, 4030 level right here. If we put on the horizontals, you'll see that it actually actually legitimately perfectly hit it. Again, it doesn't need to be exactly perfectly like that. Uh, in fact, most, most of the time it does not happen exactly like one-to-one -one like that but good enough is good enough this one obviously more than good enough and bought back up extremely well uh, right afterwards. So I was not awake when this actually happened. I didn't get to see this. So to, to actually get an idea of what happened, we need to go down to the lower time frames of five minute right here. You can see that in one five minute dildo, this whole dump was bought back up just about immediately on increasing volume as we bring it up and over. So to me, that is a pretty damn strong reaction. And overall, I am still long. That was my risk management tool that I was using over the past few days. As long as we were above 40, 30 right here, I was going to stay in my long position, which verification right over here on my uh, on my streamer account of course very I, I feel like it's very important to verify yourself when you're gonna be doing talks and shit on YouTube and whatnot because well there's no like there's no like ver verification agency like in, in you know in traditional marks you have you have the SEC you have FINRA in cryptocurrency land you have if you have the ability to make a YouTube account you can talk about cryptocurrencies but of course, I think that that, uh, that that is important to show. And more importantly, to explain what I'm thinking here, and of course, it's not financial vibes, not financial vibes, but I really don't like holding this long right now. I feel I feel quite uncomfortable, but this is just going off of pure technical analysis. As long as we're above this level, I hold on to that long. You know, the same, you know, it's the same kind of idea uh, when I took it on the, uh, you know, on the uh, on the move to the upside, when we came all the way down here to 3,900, we got back above this 3,930-ish level, which caused me to take the long and then riding it up all the way, on, all the way up and out and over here. Here. As you can see, we actually have broken this diagonal trend line that we've been working on for the past uh, for the past week or so, kind of grinding this 4100-ish area. And so far, we actually have closed our first four-hour total above this guy, straight into the next blue box territory, which you'll notice is right at <laughs> is right at the 200 200 exponential on the weekly. The very important. The very important moving average that I've been keeping an eye on uh, for my own kind of trading behavior is that as long as we are both opening and closing weekly doles below it, I am generally, I am generally, uh, do I want to say bearish? I'm, I'm certainly not bearish right now. Uh, I am generally not bullish, not, or sorry, I'm generally not bearish. Um, and probably looking for this to have a little bit more of a little bit more of a test deeper into the four thousands. Let's see, did the weekly close above on this one? It did not. It came a few bucks shy. Yeah, we came about uh, about ten bucks shy of closing above the weekly two hundred exponential. So we will be unable to both open and close uh, above this week. We'll certainly have a have a chance to close above. But here's the thing: is that I need to see both an open and close above to have a little bit more of, of you know of conviction with direction. In the lower time frames, we are going to print, be printing a lot of bearish divergence right now. Even though the even though we have taken out the resistance trend line. Uh, there is significant amounts of divergences building up. Whoops, going on over here to the four hour dollar time frame. You do see one, two, three stabs working on right now. But you know, when you do, when we do come into areas like this, and I do see that all of our medium to low time frame oscillators are getting quite tired. I mean, going over here to the 12 hour, we do see 12 hour stokes are actually crossing down right now. Um, I don't necessarily look to take a position until I actually see a breakage of structure, and that breakage of structure would be that 40 30 area. And right now, we are living well above that, actually, almost 100 bucks above it. So, you know, the longer that Bitcoin stays above here, the more and more it allows those oscillators kind of reset and then regroup, and then we can take another leg up, which does seem quite constructive in this territory right now. Uh, volume on this last move a little bit lackluster on the you know on the higher time frames, but it's still a little bit early to kind of judge these. Still got four hours on this uh, you know on this next uh, uh, twelve hour dildo. Oh fuck, man, the time the time changed as well. That's why that's why everything seems so different right now. That's right. Okay, so. We're one, we're one out ahead. That's why I'm so tired. Anyways, that makes sense. Anyways, back onto, uh, back onto the charts right here. 
you know, we are still making, or sorry, are we still make the question is, are we still making this massive, uh, this massive symmetrical triangle, which I think is best seen on the BitMexican charts right here. And I would say that uh, looking at this last move up, probably going to be a question of redrawing it at the top side of this resistance right here. But as you can see, you know, Bitcoin's just been walking itself above. We started it, we, uh, we started it right here, broke out of this trend line right here, then take the next leg up, then we create another one right here, break out of it, take the next leg up, and then we create another one right here, break out of it, take the next leg up, and then we and then we then we created another one right here we broke out or we're breaking out of it on the lower time frames likely to carry on to the higher time frames and i'd imagine that we do probably you know test a little bit higher as well so <clears throat> i'm actually going to get rid of this for now and this is why i like horizontals because typically speaking they're gonna agree with the resistances that matter the most anyways so i mean we could have put we could have put one in for like each and every one of these moves of course but for right now <clears throat> we do see that bitcoin is uh is testing this area which is really confluent with the 200 exponential on the weekly so here's the thing we we have a bunch of we have some competing narratives but we do have new things actually emerging from the market and i'm going to first start with the bullish case because the bulls have actually you know done something different uh if you know for the first time in, in over a year uh, let's go over here to the weekly and put on the weekly trollinger bands again not my favorite way of doing things but uh i do pay attention to this when it comes to, like the overall market direction and bitcoin has both open and closed its first weekly dildo above this median skid mark colored band right here sorry it's well it's just a 20 simple moon average is what it really is and typically when that happens it does imply, it does imply a test towards the upper band which is rapidly collapsing on price action just yesterday this was all the way at like 4700 and now it is quite literally at 4250 which does align with the next area that I'm kind of looking at if Bitcoin does get this next leg not only is 4250 going to be the top side of this band but it's also going to be the weekly to, uh, 21 exponential moving average put this guy on right over here you do see that the 21 exponential coming in right at the top right at the same side as that top side um that uh, that top side band for the Trollinger bands and if we take both these guys off and actually just get uh just get a little bit more deep and down and dirty into this guy you will notice that Let's go down to a to a daily. You will notice that, that our next kind of resistance trend line is coming in where? Coming in right around here, right around about 4250-ish area. So meeting up with, again, the top of the Trollinger Bands and the 21 exponential on the weekly. So we have still failed to close a weekly above the 200 exponential, which is of the utmost importance to me in the most immediate time frames. But we do see some of our, some, some of our other indicators start to, you know, switch around. Um, however, with, you know, in confluence with the other indicators, like the Trollinger bands, that would actually insinuate a test to 4250, the top band, which would also line up with this horizontal right here coming in from our past prior highs in November of last year, and also the 21 exponential on the weekly, which are all of great importance to me as well. But with the actual macro direction for the market, <clears throat> I really need to see a weekly close above the 200 exponential to start to, you know, change around, uh, you know, really feel more comfortable with changing around. Now we do see some more other, we do see some other things switching around as well confirmed which is the monthly the monthly 50 exponential moving average has been broken to the upside we have come all the way up here and not bad close above healthily above this 50 exponential moving average the first time in the last three four months as bitcoin broke the 50 exponential moving average for the first time in sorry in its history in uh in december of 2018 then one two three months below then taking it out last month on march now i'd want i'd really what i really want to see this month if bulls are going to still you know uh, maintain composure is to hold above this 50 exponential which is currently coming in right smack dab at 3900 and rally off that likely into the mid 4000s maybe even later 4000s over time but we do have a competing narrative with this and this is really the picture that i'm trying to paint right now we do have the the red tensile moving average crossing the downside of yellow 20 month expansion moving average on the monthly which is very important because to me that is a great indication of overall trend as we do have a as, as we do have a lower period trending below a higher period and actually they're going to likely be gaining divergence away from each other not only that but we do still have monthly stokes actually losing a little bit of their luster over here but as we've seen before, uh, this you know these stokes can stay down here for a long time, just like they stood up here for about a year from uh, twenty or sorry twenty seventeen to twenty eighteen. They can stay down here uh, as they just got into this area, basically beginning of or sorry late twenty eighteen. So <clears throat> my point is is that. It, what it looks like to me now is that Bitcoin's probably going to spend some time uh, grinding out these 4,000 levels, you know, the mid 4,000 level, and then we're really going to get, you know, insight into whether this, and into whether this is actually could be the end of the bear market, or if there's going to be more continuation to the downside. Looking at this current, looking at the current structure right now, I would say that I am. 
very much unconvinced that the lows are in. But does that mean that I'm bearish right now as a trader? Fuck no. I mean, I've been long for like the last week. <laughs> so again, separating opinion from trading. Trading, you know, it's a completely different game. I mean, that's well, that's the one that you know actually represents your fucking account value. Uh, where so I would I would argue that it probably matters more. But my opinion, I would still say very apprehensive to be calling that the lows in. But I would be saying that it's likely that we probably spend some time, you know, in this four thousand range consolidating between the fifty exponential and the red 10 moving average and as long as we are below the 21 exponential moving average it will still be a question mark in the back of my mind from the longer period time frame so again separating not only just my opinion from technical analysis but now from short term time frame thinking, time time frame thinking from medium time frame thinking from long and higher time frame thinking you know i can certainly be bullish in the lower time frames which i have been for the past i mean a couple of weeks it looks like now uh <clears throat> and now i, I guess I'd, i would be in the medium time frame time frames as well uh but the but the super high macro time frames Am I, you know, do I think that the lows are in? I don't think that I'm, I, I don't think that I'd say that just yet especially as a trader, I need to see us get first things first, close, open and close a weekly total above the 200 exponential, which is 4,100. And then the one that would be a lot more meaningful to me would be getting a monthly total close above this yellow 20 month exponential, which is collapsing on price action rather rapidly as well. That's coming in right around uh, 51.39, it looks like on Bitstamp. You'll notice that uh, in 2014, 2015, when Bitcoin regained the 21 exponential, that was actually the beginning of the bull market. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say something like this, saying, Crown, hey, in, in 2014, 2015, when the 10 simple crossed the downside of the yellow 21 exponential right over here, that was, you know, that was basically when the bear market was over, and that's what we're having right now. Yes, I understand that, and I understand that that's what it looks like from the past, but here's the thing. In the past, Bitcoin really had not been around for that long. I mean, at this point, at 2015, it had, been, it had been trading for about five or so years. So these moving averages, which are done on a monthly, and keep in mind, you know, for a 10 or a 21, you need at least you need at least 10 and 21 respectively to uh, print in just one fucking thing, you know, one uh, one tick on you know on you know on these uh, on on, you know, on these moving averages. Well, <clears throat> I would argue that, that that Bitcoin in general, the asset was too young for these to really you know have any sort of uh, compliance with price action. When I look at it right over here, Bitcoin's you know basically double its length it's it's been trading for almost 10 years now i'd say that's uh this is more likely to more likely to actually play out if it were to happen but still same you know first things first uh i'd want to see a test around the 10 simple moon average which is actually just above 5,000 as well around there you know give or take a few hundred bucks um and uh and depending upon that reaction i think that's going to be the next very insightful thing from like the super macro time frames suggesting to us what is you know where we are in the actual market cycle are we done with the bearish market cycle and are we ready to be bullish or are we you know just playing out a more prolonged cycle and right now i would be saying what i've been saying for the past year or so this this whole phase of the market cycle could take a very 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 long time um i think that uh you know as far as market spotting i'm not necessarily sure i'd be i'd be looking at this as a uh, as, as a market cycle bottom but as a trader you know certainly tradable and like i said i i mean I've been long for the last fucking week. Uh, this position was 180,000 contracts. I'm actually looking a little bit silly because I got rid of uh, 130,000 of those contracts um, so far. But, you know, all distributed over that 4,000 marker. I'm pretty happy with that. Anyways, um, okay, cool. So we talked about that in Bitcoin. Yeah, lower time frames are a little bit concerning, however, just because there is being, the, you know, there is divergence being showed every, you know, just, just about everywhere. Uh, four hour has some divergence. Eight hour has some divergence. Uh, 12 hour has bearish divergence uh daily has does daily have any divergence um uh too early to tell on daily we we don't necessarily have a local top confirmed just yet um in fact we have we haven't even been able to take take off the lows any you know anytime soon it's just been complete up uh this is actually quite a powerful move daily stokes are up as well uh daily actually looks okay right here and here's the thing is that we are going to start to switch around some of the higher time frames as well, like the three day, which I've been keeping an eye on the three day Stokes for the last, uh, well, I mean for the, <laughs> for for forever really, but but basically more recently because of this trend line going all the way back from December twentieth of, uh, sorry December seventeen, or sorry December fifteenth of uh, twenty seventeen when Bitcoin was around twenty thousand, just mixing up all my all my numbers now, uh, in absolute uh, in absolute tra travesty. Anyways. 
<clears throat> we do have this line getting not only the 20,000 high right here, but also the bull trap of uh, 10,000 in May last year, and also the bull trap of 8,400 in August last year. Right now, we are right amongst this trend line once again, and we just got a new tick on this. So we, so if I do see Bitcoin start to signal any sort of weakness in this area, if if we close this next three-day little a little bit weaker, I will interpret that as this trend line being respected. Right now, it is gaining momentum, however, to the upside. So I'd say that quite literally the opposite is happening. If I'm just looking at that, not only that, but looking at the three day dildos right here. I mean, this is this looks like it, as we've been saying for the last few days, it looks like it wants up in this more immediate uh, in this more immediate construction looks very constructive. If that's not redundant enough, but basically, you know, two day dildo time frame is up as long as we are defending the 50 exponential, which is actually right around that 4000 marker. I'd still be using 4030 if 4030 breaks, and that's kind of my, you know, my uh, my risk management tool for that long. Uh, Two-day stokes are up and and getting very erect, very powerful. Uh, Two-day RSI looking fine, uh, no no glaring obvious issues there. Um, I know a lot of people are calling bearish divergence on that. It's not just yet. It's you have to confirm a local high, it, and that is we just haven't done that. Uh, three-day, <clears throat> we already talked about that, but same same sort of thing here. Uh, three days, three-day RSI. Uh, actually reaching for new highs. So this is this this move, I mean, looks like it wants to go. And look look at where the 50 exponential is, where you know this kind of insinuates that it wants to test is uh, right around that 4250-ish area. So 4250 would be my next level that I'm looking for. Um, <clears throat> at that point, I do believe that I would be a seller on first pass just because not only will we have the monthly 21 exponential, but we will also have to deal with the top of the Trollinger band on the weekly. We'll also have to deal with the three-day 50 exponential and the horizontal coming in all the way back from uh, late November. So a lot of good confluences within that area. I believe it probably would sell off in first pass. Now, I know a lot of people are calling this an inverted head and shoulders. And the thing about that is, well, first things first, it's not... Um Volume signature would not necessarily be right, but I'm I, I'm a little bit more leaning on that with cryptocurrencies. Uh, more importantly, this the the actual structure of this would not be correct. Uh, we want to see a V bottom on the actual head and the right shoulder is kind of dragging on for a little bit too long. But what we do have more more so of is this is what would have been the right shoulder is what people are looking at is we do actually have a massive symmetrical triangle or ascending triangle, no matter which way you kind of paint this one. Uh, it would imply more bullish nature right now, just because you know even if it was symmetrical, just because um, you know it's it's been so constructive on this kind of walk up along the daily 50 exponential this trend line that's been holding price action up and rallying off of ever since uh, middle of february of uh, of this year now if this does break up to the upside i wouldn't be looking for a move or there there technically is a a measure move pointing all the way up to almost about 4500 which would be around the daily 200 and two, uh, 200 simple and 200 exponential which are slowly slowly but surely crawling their way down in my god they changed the pink color so now i have this like weird this color just does not look as uh, as hot, ma'am, unfortunately. Anyways, uh, so yes, technically there would be a measure move like that, which <clears throat> is the correct way to do it. And if we do take out this next kind of blocky territory, which looks like it wants to today, um, technically that that is where I'd be suggesting. But like I said, forty two fifty is no is nothing to is, is nothing to write off. And let me actually just get it exactly right right here. Let me get it right in this zone. You know, we're gonna make a nice little zone like this. There we go. And I'm put a nice blue box. I'm actually gonna get rid of the blue box right here. Nope. Come on. There we go. And put it right over here. And there we go. And that's kind of the 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 next initial area that I'd be looking towards. Uh, also, yeah, again, getting these spike highs and this in this high right over there. Uh, so I really do like that area if we do break upwards and out and outwards over here, which does look quite, kind of likely or does look quite likely. I mean, it certainly is suggesting a more bullish uh, narrative with this. Uh, we do have this uh, this consolidation still kind of tailing off on the overall volume. So I would say that this overall consolidation has not broken up. So while we have been kind of walking ourselves along the gee, the ramp, if you remember the ramp, holy shit, man. Uh, but basically, I'm talking about this thing that we are kind of breaking out of, then walking up over here, then walking up over here then walking up over here um <clears throat> i would say that the overall formation has still not broken out as verified by the volume signature if we can break out of this level right here i'd imagine that we probably do get a massive spike in volume and that's where we could see that next move at the very least to 4250 and if we get the full-on measure move from this formation then yes that 4450 to 4500 level would look would look quite appropriate which does make sense with the monthly <clears throat> to be quite serious so again a lot of things kind of lining up right now um this would be my main look on bitcoin as long as we are again holding up above this 40 30 level which we perfectly retested last night i really do like that as an overall look um again i'm not saying these things to come off as arrogant but these were you know th this is exactly what we were looking for yesterday after we ground this uh this 4100 level right here uh get a quick down to retest this area and then back back upwards and onwards so to to kind of relate what i was thinking there 
is basically I wanted to see the reaction when we came back down and retested this area. And obviously, if it was going to be weaker, if we were going to kind of hang around this level or, I mean, even break it, that would have certainly been more bearish. And I would have been looking for an overall comeback down to the lower levels at 3,900. However, Bitcoin had the perfect reaction. It was bought up immediately, as we saw in the lower time frames, the five minute. Um, just, it basically, in, in one five minute dildo, it was bought all the way back on, on up and then made new highs. That is a hunt. And that is, you know, that is basically just a retest, ta uh, tap and fucking run which again certainly implies much more bullish narrative and please do let me know if the uh if the microphone's working properly today i believe that i have fixed the settings but uh you know how there's like always new new computer problems always really annoying man but you know what i think i i, I think it's good to go anyways uh yeah well we are here on the four hour like i said it, it it does make it difficult just because there's so much divergences going on right now uh it's not like i would be taking longs right now if, if you know if we did break above 4130 then yes i would think i would consider taking a long towards uh, 4250 um again while there is a measure move pointing higher and i'm sure that the inverted head and shoulders people are pointing much much higher uh i'd still be i'd still be on the defensive here there's no real rush from my perspective but again, that's my perspective. You know, you might be different. You might be, um, I don't know, you, you, I mean, everyone has different perspectives, right? Uh, my perspective is coming from the frame of being a short-term, you know, day trader, essentially. So, <clears throat> so I'm, you know, I'm more than happy to kind of sit on my hands and wait. And like I said, I'm right now I'm long, so I don't really have to do too much to begin with. Uh, maybe play a few options positions, but, but for the most part, you know, it's no more complicated than this. Resistance right here, likely for the whole, you know, kit and caboodle at uh, 4130. If that breaks to the upside, I'd be looking at 4250. Uh, extremely likely. And then 45, a little bit below 4500 would probably be the next area. You do see Bitcoin kind of back now off uh, off of this area. If we do break 4100, probably does come back down and retest a lower level at 4030, 4040. Um, but, you know, until we actually break this level right here, I don't really see anything that happens in this zone as too meaningful without breaking to the upside or breaking this horizontal right here to the downside. If we break this horizontal here to the downside, then yes, I would be looking for another move ultimately down to the support, this rising support trend line around 39.30ish uh, area. Um, by the same token, if we break this up to the upside, well, we've been talking about enough, so probably already know. I'm just repeating myself. Sorry about that. Just a little bit of early morning and uh, my brain is a little bit tired. So if we were to break 4,100, then yeah, I'd be looking for another test back down around here that would not it would certainly not it would certainly not look too hot you know if uh if if bitcoin did that but until bitcoin actually breaks 40 30 i i i wouldn't get like bearish on it or anything like that it's just not not the right thing from a trading perspective you know again separating a painting from trading um, okay, cool. So we spoke all about that. Uh, I think we talked enough about the weekly or did we talk enough about the weekly? No, we actually have a few more things to be talked about on the weekly. So the weekly is very interesting for multiple reasons, not just our trolling bands, not just our exponentials, not just our stokes, which are getting extremely high actually into the bullish control zone. I mean, they haven't been this high since since January of, uh, of, of one year ago, uh, 2018. But more importantly, the RSI is right here. Let me actually put on the uh, let me actually put on the drawing tools. Our RSI is right at the exact same level that Bitcoin was consolidating at in uh, you know above six thousand and you know during the end of twenty eighteen for about five six months that we broke down from before the move from six thousand to three thousand right over here. Well, Bitcoin is right at the same level once again. So here's the thing. <clears throat> here's the thing is that uh, typically speaking, when I do see a retest of this area, it will sell off on first pass. Right now we are actually living above. But remember, this is a new weekly dildo and as far as weeklies go, it operates on a weekly dildo time frame. So we are one day into this one. And, uh, and as you can see, this this portion right here is the reactive part, which means that uh, if Bitcoin were to turn down, you know, it could happen at any time. And as long as we respect this horizontal right here, um, you know, that still kind of fulfill that. And overall, just just as an aside, I kind of would be looking for I would be looking for the RSI to pop back down and retest the exponential on it sometime relatively soon, as it has been living away from it for, for, uh, for quite some time. Uh, more importantly, we still, technically speaking, you know, again, just straight up off of technicals, have not broken the 200 exponential on the weekly, even by just a closure, not just e not not even an open and close, but just a closure. And uh, and and we do see this RSI getting extremely erect, just rising up and onwards all the way through, which to me is just allowing the RSI to reset. So that is so I really want to present both sides here because I've been talking about all this bullish stuff, but I can't help but think that there are some there certainly are some warning signs uh, within these charts. Not only that, but if we actually go back to 2014 2015 we have a very similar setup over here with the rsi where the rsi <clears throat> where the rsi uh where was it we had this area right here yeah okay so you see the rsi right here where essentially it creates 
Let's actually get this right. Essentially, it creates this level. Whoops. Oh yeah, it's actually it's actually the same level that we're looking at right now. Funnily enough, um, <clears throat> as we have the same horizontal coming in uh, at the current moment in time. But basically, Bitcoin, you know, was consolidating above its major bull trap area of 2014, right over here, creating the same sort of uh, you know the same sort of formation where we had some like this going on, right? something like this and uh, support trend line right here breaks down from the support breaks and that's 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 when this falls on on all the way over to this area right here and you can see that you know bitcoin first puts in this first low right here basically on the exact same area that uh, that bitcoin's come down to in the current year pops back up retests the same area that same area that it broke down from on the first pass gets rejected then pops back back down makes a lower low that's the ultimate low right there and then works its way higher uh, ultimately breaking this back to the upside in fact getting it perfectly like this and in, in fact this was actually a little bit more of a uh, of, of a better way of doing it so could we make a similar you know a similar uh some response right over here well actually actually that would imply that we've already broken it now wouldn't it hmm Yes, yeah, so perhaps that's something to consider, or maybe I'm drawing it wrong as it should be right over here, which would actually make a little bit more sense as I'd come right in at the, actually, yes, this would be correct because this would be the whole consolidation above 6,000 starting in February. I do apologize about that. I did have that wrong, but the more initial consolidation right here, yes, that would have been broken. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, that makes sense. Sorry. Again, waking up for an early morning <laughs> and the clocks have actually changed. If you're not, if, if you're not familiar with Europe, we don't, we don't change our clocks until apparently at the end of March for whatever reason. So America had changed their clocks beforehand. Now we're changing our clocks. So there we go. Anyways, <clears throat> anyways, uh, yeah, we have not necessarily broken it just yet. And uh, popping back up to retest this area, well, <clears throat> kind of the same exact same exact thing that happened in 2014 right over here. You know, coming back up to test this area, first first pass was rejected, pops back down, makes a secondary low, and then we come back up and eventually break it. And that leads on to the three-year bull run, the parabolic cycle, all the way to 20,000. So I did want, you know, I did want to quickly talk about that. Uh, shout out to Michael for pointing that out. Massive, massive appreciation for that. And hey, oh my God, we see a dildo party over there. But uh, but for whatever reason, I don't have speakers on this computer, so <laughs> I can't hear it all the time. So I apologize, I apologize about it if I didn't uh, catch it um, immediately or if, if I missed anyone. Uh, not intentional at all. Whoa, as I calf up some uh, some ground beef. Okay, so we spoke about all of, all of that. Um, I feel like we haven't spent too much time in the lower time frames. Uh, hourly's looking a little. Hourly does look tired. Hourly Stokes way up there. They want to cut. I mean, they they do want to come down. Bitcoin does look like it wants a little bit of a breather here. Uh, two hour, you know, bearish divergence. Day, uh, two hour Stokes looking tired. Three hour Stokes looking tired. Three hour Stokes are actually kind of making a formation right here. A uh, little bit of a descending triangle, right? Some like this. Typically, these do break down, but uh, as you can see, it can spend a lot of time within this range. Anyways, I'm going to get rid of it for now. Uh, but just kind of another thing that's saying, hey, price action looks a little bit tired. Uh, but of course, 4100 is now the more preliminary support. Uh, bearish divergence on this on this time frame as well. Uh, so again, basically every time frame has bearish divergence all the way up to a 12 hour and. All stokes are looking quite tired in that same region as well. So fair enough. Um, anyways, uh, let's go check out CMEs. Let's go check out CMEs. So, so those would be on the more immediate, you know, looking for for a pullback right now. Uh, CME is going to be hitting this upper resistance trend line once again, right around that critical 4135-ish level, which is also lined up with the Cyan uh, 89 exponential moving average right over here, which we actually did. We actually did pretty much test it in the early morning hours, it looks like. And then look at this. The signature, the volume signature on this, still suggestive of this being a consolidation, still consolidating essentially, which if this is consolidation, I mean, this is a, a rising wedge, which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern. Um, uh, can we grind the top of it? You know, sure, sure, sure. Uh, ugh. I'm like a fucking robot. <laughs> sure, of course we can. We can certainly grind it for a little bit. It could take a few days, uh, but it would imply a little bit more weakness. Uh, daily stokes are up. That would certainly be a more positive thing. And daily RSI. Daily RSI is actually broken out of this triangle. Hey, not bad. Um, it you know it is it is operating on a daily, but. I was watching this to kind of judge uh, the bearish divergence on a daily. It looks like we're actually going to, looks like we kind of do want to break it out to the upside um, uh, by end of day. But hey, needs a close, needs a close here or higher by end of day to fully confirm that. But for now, it does look good. Uh, although competing narrative would be rising wedge, which is typically a, bear, a more bearishly resolved pattern. And of course, if we did take another leg up, where's the next resistance going to be? Right here, right, exactly right here, right around 42.50, that same area that we see on spot. Um, 
you can even make like a little bit of a zone. So I'm going to put another blue box uh, guy right there kind of mark this one off. And there we go. So yeah, if, you know, if we do break above, what is it like 4135? Yeah, right over here. That's exactly where I'd be looking towards uh, 4250 ish area. Um, okay. All right. I'm curious what the lower time frames look like. However, uh, 12 hour Stokes getting way up there. What about four, uh, four hour, four hour Stokes are coming down four hour bearish divergence all the way through. I mean, it do does to me like it, it does look to me like things want to come back down at the very least to retest uh, 4060. Um, but keep in mind that it's the 4030 level is a critical one. If 4030 gets taken out, then I start looking for some actual downside. This one, you know, is it going to be another example of BTFD, bro? Mm, perhaps, but like I said, 4030 is the area that I'm watching uh, for for less fake outs. If, if, if you want to call it that. Uh, we can go take a look at some um, GBDC really quick. Yeah, let's go look at GBDC. Uh, again, GBDC kind of forming the same thing, you know, making a massive rising wedge, rallying off the, uh, or, or still holding the low so far, a little bit of a bear trap right over here, and then up, not bad. Um, what else do we have? I think I think that's pretty much it for GBDC. GBDC four hour stokes are up, daily stokes are down, but losing momentum. I mean, GBDC looks like it wants to have another run at five dollars. This has been a great leading indicator for Bitcoin for the past uh, year. Um, does it continue to be the same leading indicator? Because actually, this came, this thing came came all the way back down to test the low side of the range. Do we see spot charts follow in the in the more immediate time frames, and then they catch up together? Do they do they get back in sync, or are we seeing divergence between the two? That is the real question. Speaking of more divergence behaviors on the higher time frames for Bitcoin. I completely forgot to talk about this, but it is very important nonetheless. And man, I'm so frustrated with the way that for, for whatever reasons I have, I've auto save on all my charts, but for whatever reason, it seems like all my charts were ported back to like two or three months ago and they're just stuck in that phase, which is quite annoying. Uh, as I keep on having to to redo them on this new computer. Um, anyways, uh, okay, what I want to check out? Yeah, the two week total time frame. Yeah, let's go check it. Let's go check this out. As this as this was set in stone last night, and guess what? We have now also done some else that we have not done in over a year for Bitcoin. We have both open and closed a two week total above this red ten moon average. The last time that we did that was in twenty like very beginning of twenty eighteen. Basically, the whole you know we we were living above it the whole run through for the three year rally, uh, <laughs> three year parabolic blow off top, um, and this is the first time that we've actually maintained above it. Now, here's the thing again, does that immediately make me bullish? It makes me look for a little bit more upside. According to this chart, I'd be looking for a move towards this uh, cyan moving average right here, which is about 4350-ish area, right around that 4250-ish area that we kind of spoke about before. Uh, but more importantly, I'm looking at the green and the yellow moving averages, the green, the, the green 55 and the yellow 21 exponential, which are actually gaining more divergence away from each other, which tells me this. It tells me that the next major resistance that we do see, I would be looking to be a seller just because these moving averages are giving me insight in where the overall trend is still being ground down towards. And these do hold more weight than the 10 simple, of course, on a time frame like this as um, well on any time frame essentially as well. But that doesn't mean that in the more immediate time frames, we can't have a move to the upside. So this is where, again, where it, it I know it's annoying, but as a trader, we really have to be able to separate Short-term time frames, medium time frames, high time frames, macro time frames, all those things. In the short-term time frames, I could be certainly a little bit, well, I mean, actually, I'd be looking for a little bit of a pullback if I want to get like super short-term time frame, but ultimately, I would be I would be looking for a test higher. Um, <clears throat> but the higher time frames are, say, are, are suggesting, hey, be aware that in this, you know, in this next 4250-ish range, there is a lot of resistances aligning with that, and our higher time frame uh, trend markers are still suggesting that the trend is quite, you know, still quite strong to the downside. Uh, we haven't necessarily confirmed anything from like the super macro time frame just yet. I mean, Bitcoin still has failed to even close above the 200 exponential on the weekly. It looks like it really wants to on this next one, but until it actually does it, you know, confirmation is confirmation. And more importantly, all of our other high time frames, like the like the two week, like, the, like we're looking at right here with these two moving averages and the monthly with the 10 simple and the yellow 21 exponential are suggesting that the higher time frame trends are actually gaining strength to the downside overall. And this is just a pullback. Doesn't mean that the pullback can't, you know, can't travel. I mean, shit, it could get all the way up to 5,000, you know, that's that's something that we're gonna have to take day by day essentially but as long as we're kind of walking it up right now i'm respective of the upside like i said i am long right over here showing this position once again but i am <clears throat> i am ca i'm certainly cautious in that regard and i'll be very 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 happy to get out of that long position if bitcoin violates 40 30 to the downside anytime soon or if we hit that 42 50 ish level um i'll probably put on an options play to kind of you know lock some of that in because i don't really want to be giving any way around any you know any more back in a range like this as i look at over here there we go okay just making sure that my other screen is safe and safu making sure that uh oh man press the wrong button on my uh 
on my stream, on my stream. Okay, good. Everything's still running. Great. Awesome. I'm actually recording and uh, don't have to re-record another full hour. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Anyways. Um, okay. So we spoke about all about, uh, we spoke all about that. Um, let's go check about, let's go check out, uh, the other top shit coins. So make this one a little bit shorter as I am doing a little bit of a later update today and, uh, Cardano having a good close yesterday. I'm in a very good close. Did we close? Uh, no, we're still we're still working on this rising uh, this rising wedge. I don't I, I forget if I covered this yesterday, but we did call a top right over here again. The 1700 to 1750 ish area uh, likely to come back down. I think that's that's kind of what we're seeing right now. I'd be looking for a move back down to about 1630 ish area, uh, but ultimately I'd, I'd want to see it retest around 1600. Um, we do see some bearish divergence on the daily right here. One, two, three stabs uh, back below the exponential. We do see daily stokes getting tired as well, uh, wanting to cross down daily jewel is going to be switching around relatively soon but not a sell signal as of yet uh, let's go to a 12 hour 12 hours just more advanced than that 12 hour jewel actually has given the signal i believe let's go check it out yes it has uh just one degree like uh, almost almost an example of a perfect signal so if this thing did pop back up to, to grind 1750 that would probably be a sell to me uh because a lot of the time with the jewel is like i'll get the signal and then you'll actually pop back up test resistance one more time and then the move occurs uh so did we already have that or are we going to see that uh, is a real question well again these things take time so it's it's this is the reaction that I'd, be, I'd be looking for the reaction over the next uh day day and a half or so uh but overall i'd be looking for at the very least to come back to around 1600 ish uh overall uh, again, it could take a little bit of time. 12-hour stokes are looking weak and kind of down right now, not necessarily uh, fully confirmed. But am I bearish on Cardano? No, I'm not bearish on Cardano. You're actually about to get a golden cross on the uh, on the daily right over here, the green 55 and the purple 200. So as long as this thing's above 1350, I think I think overall good. Um, but I would certainly be looking for a pullback uh, again, 1600 first first kind of area. Or sorry, I, I suppose I suppose 1650 first area, but I think that we move lower than that. Uh, a little bit below 1600 it would be my second area, and then third and final would be around 1450. As long as you're kind of above that area, uh, I would I would consider this more more constructive in nature. Um, but you know, still, 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 still wanting a, uh, a pullback. Anyway, let's go check out uh, BNB count, BNB grinding the top once again, but. I don't know, this one's been kind of a wild card. Still unable to break out of this top, make, kind of making an ascending brawny wedge, putting in uh, bearish divergence all the way through. Uh, Jewel is going to, ooh, Jewel is going to be setting up for a perfect, perfect, perfect in the next uh, two days. Out of, uh, I think two days is what I'd be, is what I'd be uh, uh, comfortable with calling that. As long as long as uh, $17.70 is not broken to the upside. If $17.70 is broken to the upside, then, then this baby's going to run and to, to the 20s 22 probably something like that it's 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 powerful um <clears throat> but if this thing fails to break 1770 in the next uh, couple in the next day day and a half I'd, I'd say that we probably do see this play out and uh, that'd probably imply a test all the way down at, you mean at the very least to about 15 dollars and uh, 80 cents but probably even down here at 14 dollars and 70 cents uh zcash Again, you know, taking it's gonna it's gonna take days for that to actually happen. Zcash taking a leg up out of this uh, descending triangle, not bad. Hey, joining the party. There you are, Zcash. Welcome to the party. Uh, you're late, but late is better than never. Bcash, uh, again, getting stifled right at this horizontal that we've been looking at. I do think that this one comes back down and retests, uh, the, you know, at the very least, somewhere down around here, uh, 159, 160-ish area. Uh, if things get a little bit more nasty, 155. Going to depend on the rest of the market, though, but daily stokes, uh, get looking very tired. Daily RSI, bearish divergence, back below the exponential, kicked out of the bullish control zone, and uh, overall, just looking a little bit, uh, well, kind of putting in a little bit of a rising, uh, what do you want to call it? A sunny brownie wedge? You want to call it a rising channel? I don't care what you call it, but uh, it's indicative of a little bit more pressure on it. Uh, Tron Cash right in the middle of this formation. Uh, literally right in the middle of this, but does look like it wants to take a leg up here. Uh, I do think that Tron Cash wants to kind of retest uh, two and a half cents probably. Uh, Daily Stokes looking up. Daily RSI mm, looking okay. Uh, Neo Cash. Neo, woo, Neo Cash. Okay, Neo Cash uh, came back down, retested the level that we were looking for yesterday, or were we looking for this le level yesterday? I forget what I said on Neo Cash yesterday, but hopefully I was saying something like this, where I'd want to see a retest of this uh, 970 ish area and then rally off that. And that's kind of what we're doing right now, uh, kind of walking its way up. If this thing does want to take another leg, uh, nothing's stopping it from $11. Uh, EOS Cash. Um, EOS Cash, uh, I think, probably comes back up, grinds this 450 ish area, but I don't think that it's, um, I don't think that it's ready just yet i mean of course if it does take out 450 then yeah it's, I, I don't think i don't see anything stopping you from uh shit 580 at that point i mean you can have like a legitimate break out of that point uh, not too much stopping you from this area 
uh, by the same token, you know, as long as we're kind of grinding the 450-ish area, can put in some time here as our daily stokes get tired, as our daily RSI puts in some more, in some more bearish divergence, and then pop back down, retest this uh, 390-ish area. Um, <clears throat> again, for all of these alts, it's more appropriate to really say they're going to do whatever Bitcoin and uh, Buterol and, and Mrs. Litecoin do, typically speaking. Uh, Ripplecone, Ripplecone grinding its resistance once again as well. Still still stuck in the descending triangle, uh, broken from the more preliminary one, but uh, 31, 31 and a half cent is the, uh, is, the, is the lowering resistance on this guy. If 31 and a half cents can be broken out to the upside, I would be looking for an overall move to likely 33 and a half cent or 30, 33 and a quarter right here. Uh, perhaps even as far as uh, 34 and a half cent, but somewhere in this range, most likely. Um, by the same token, you know, still getting rejected from this trend line. So, you know, the rest of the market looking a little bit strong. Mr. Ripple's nipples not looking so strong, looking a little bit flaccid, and I'm not too happy about that. Uh, well, I mean, am I too happy about that? I don't fucking trade Ripple. I, I, I have no opinion on it. And what's up, uh, Timothy Michael? Good to meet you, man. Always a pleasure to meet new people. Uh, Daily Stokes up. Daily RSI looks like it does want to rally here. I mean, oscillators will be suggesting that at the very least we get another test of this 31 and a half cent region if it breaks. So that's what I'd really be looking forward towards that uh, 33 and a half cent move. Um, let's go look at Monero Cash 50. Oh, nice. Taking a move up. There we go. Yeah, Monero looking like one of the better ones. Uh, does look like it wants to break this area. In fact, I would suggest that this, oops, this right here has been broken. Uh, hold on. What do we have going on here? We have we have like a massive ascending triangle. That's what we have, and I believe that that has been broken as of right here. So let's let's just actually paint this one in and see what's going on. I'm I'm doing a terrible job of doing this. This is not the right way to do it, by the way. I just want to get an idea. Um, yeah, about 61, 62 bucks, something like that. Uh, Stella Cash, uh, getting to grind uh, with everyone else and taking a leg up here. Yeah, I do think you know I do you know I think the I think the other day I was looking for this one to pop back down. I'm gonna change my mind on that. I don't I I, I don't believe that I just because everything else is rallying and this one's been so persistent along this resistance trend line right around 11.9 uh, cent uh, we do see daily stokes started to open up and cross on over back to the upside we do see daily rsi uh taking back up the ups the the exponential i think that this one's probably going to come back up here and uh and test the prior high at 11 and a half cents most likely um of course this is all hinged upon the fact that we hold above uh, this 10.8 cent region right here but I, you know, I think it's going to catch wind of the rest of the market. All right, let's go check out. Uh, let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin and. Uh could do a little bit of forex too. Uh, Mrs. Litecoin got the golden cross on the daily uh, resistance right around here. Well, I mean, right around this uh, 61 and a half cent region right here. Uh, but here's the thing: major bearish divergence on all time frames. Daily Jewel is going to be lining up for a perfect, 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 perfect sell signal in the next uh, two to three days. It looks like again, getting getting uh, getting closer and closer. As long as this area is not broken, the more time that Mrs. Litecoin spends here without breaking it, that Jewel will have to catch up, and that will be the ultimate signal. But hey, if uh, if sixty one and a half dollars is broken up to the upside, I mean technically sixty three and a half dollars is the real resistance. But uh, at that point, I just I'm I'm not, you know, we can talk about targets to the upside. Technically speaking, I guess seventy three seventy five might be my next target. But I I'm not I'm just not bearish on Mrs. Like one if that were to happen. Um, I hope I've been pretty damn clear with stating this, uh, for the past month or so. Uh, daily daily stokes crossing back up. I I think that she does give another test of this sixty one and a half cent uh, region right here. Um. And, you know, we do have the golden cross. Like I said, my rule is for golden crosses, I don't trade against them. I mean, I mean, more importantly, I'd like to trade with them, uh, well, you know, on the side of the cross, as long as we're, as long as we have the cross, the green 55 and the purple 200, and we are above, I mean, all major moving averages right here, but especially above the 21, uh, that's quite powerful to me. So we can have all the bearish things on our oscillators, but, and even the jewel, but I, that is my rule. Uh, doesn't mean that I can't fall over from there, but if we, you know, if we break, if we break the 21 at about 58 and a half dollars, then I start looking for some actual downwards moves towards uh, 53 bucks but for now you know pressure's on uh, to the upside uh buterol buterol giving another uh having another retest of this trend line or sorry this this support right here at the uh, 21 exponential of 140 ish area still just kind of overall forming this what do you want to call it? ascending triangle essentially Resistance at a 147 and a half support rising at 136. Uh, if 130, if 147 and a half can be taken out to the upside, I would be looking for a rather quick move towards. Uh, 
I mean, technically speaking, I, I guess 154 and a half, that's probably going get, to get, get respected. But ultimately, I'd be looking for a move towards 161. Uh, again, going to depend on whatever, the, you know, on whatever Bitcoin and Mrs. Litecoin do, because they have been the leaders. Uh, by the same token, if it were to break 136 to the downside, then, you know, I'd start looking towards a move of uh, 127 and a half. But right now, uh, pressure's on to the upside. Daily stokes are up. Daily RSI looks fine. Daily RSI looks bullish to me, actually. Um, all right, some Forex time, some Dixie, some Dixie time. Uh, Dixie, uh, dollar index, making a massive attraction ascending triangle speaking of speak of the devil sending triangle is the uh, is the name of the game right now and more importantly dixie has been counter to bitcoin overall macro direction for the past uh, couple of years and well that's you know more importantly because well bitcoin trades quite literally against the dollar <laughs> so uh so so uh, so that makes sense when the dollar goes up, so, you know bitcoin naturally goes down and vice versa uh but you know, with with creating a massive uh, sending triangle like this, I would be looking for dollar pairings to to move a little bit higher, just because uh, I would be looking for an overall test of this ninety seven dollar region right here. Now, am I looking for this whole sending triangle to actually break anytime soon? No, uh, the uh, the apex is, is is all the way out in like a August, middle of August of this year. So it can certainly spend a lot more time within here. Uh, but as long as you know, it, it looks like we do have some room to the upside right now. Uh, daily stocks up, daily RSI looking looking like it wants up to me as well. Daily jewel just switched out switched over to a bullish posturing uh, somewhere right over here and uh, I would think that this one probably gets more continuation to test the the top side resistance one more time overall you know and this is talking like months and months out but I would be looking for a move if this breaks out to the upside somewhere up here to about you know hundred dollars so I do like that uh, something to keep an eye on if you're trading Forex that's what I'd be uh, that's what I really want to be aware of right now just because the dollar is you know is making this massive bullish consolidation uh, put in the lows when Bitcoin was putting in the highs and in, uh, in beginning of 2018 and uh, ever since then it's been rallying upwards and onwards while while Bitcoin has been coming down so if this guy actually were actually to break out above this area above this uh, 97 and uh, 67 cent region right here that would be that would be my marker for that you know, that would be my mark for that. Uh, and watch out Bitcoin. You know, that, that has not been a good thing for Bitcoin in the past. Anyways, going back on to Mr. Bitcoin right now, I'm going to start to wrap this up because, well, I've talked enough and this has already been a quite a long video. And uh, in the more immediate time frames, you know, still working on this massive uh, symmetrical triangle or sending triangle now, I suppose you could say. Uh, volume signature has not given us the full breakout effect for the whole formation, but we have gotten the walk above, you know, the walk of effect, or, you know, which we showed earlier. Uh, I would imagine that if we actually do break above 41.35, that would be the signal for likely a nice flush towards 42.50. I would imagine that the uh, volume profile is showing, yeah, the volume profile is kind of showing that that's kind of like the next area in this next blue box territory. Sorry, 42.50 right here. Technically speaking, there would be a measure move towards 4,500. Although, like I said, there are significant amounts of things in the way at 4250 and because everyone's so bullish right now and everyone's so uh gung-ho saying that the bear market's over i would be i am very apprehensive around an area like that where, where the 21 exponential on the weekly comes in where the top troll under band on the weekly comes in and also um you know we're coming into weekly rsi resistance we're coming into we're going to be coming into some monthly we're going to come into some horizontals coming in all the way back from uh, november december highs and some volume profile being thrown along in the way so that's what i'd be looking at right over there now of course in the more in the very low time frames bitcoin's actually looking a little bit weak right here printing all kinds of bearish bearish divergences you could even say that this is you know one massive uh rising channel right here um but in you know if, you know here, here's what i could say more concretely if we break 4100 right here I'll be looking for another move down to test 4030 if we break 4030 i get out of my long position and i look probably for a move down here somewhere around uh 39 39 30 39 40. um and if that area breaks i mean that just you know changed around the whole perspective but for now uh that's kind of what i have my eyes on so that's going to do it for this morning's video i'll be back on later with some more live stream action looking forward to seeing there looking forward to talking about all sorts of new things with bitcoin and magic and money so until next time, take care and I'll see you soon.